Okay, let's have a look at this problem. Notice that it's saying here the normal shearing stresses on an element located at H having sides parallel to XY axis. So doing something in this plane. this H location. Um, we can do a kind of like mass sections approach. So first take a cut of the H location that we're interested in. And what we have there is we're exposed the internal forces. So we have a force which we have acting in the centroid of the um, um, what would I call it, the handle. So that's, uh, and I know that's going to be, that will be Seven fifty newtons, um, but we're not particularly interested in that. What we're interested in is this element that's just here, sort of, um, and that's going to be our stress element. So we're treating this as a plane strain problem. You can work out what the stress is you like going off in this direction and you're going to get a shearing stress of oh, I worked out before of about one mega pascals so <clears throat> it's not going to be a large value compared to the bending stress that you have from here to if we kind of move this force here, so we're going to get a bending stress from here to here. Uh, what's that? Uh, what's that bending stress going to have? So that will have a value of m will be. Seven fifty times point two five so one eight seven five point five Newton meters. And the other stress that you're going to have, so I could draw this on like this. So we've got this turning moment, and it's going to have that value. The other one will be the fact that we've got this sort of torsion. And that's going to be caused by this force and this trying to twist it. So we're going to have a torsion. And the torsion will have seven fifty. Um, times the length of this. That's my twisting moment. So 
So that'd be three three seven point five. Okay. So let's focus in now on this this element here and look at it from the side. So there's going to be no tensile stress pulling it off in this direction. You can see that this force is perpendicular going in this direction, so into the plane and it's small. So that stress there will, will take to be zero. This stress here, well, we have to see I'm applying a stress on this side you can see what will happen is that as I've tried to sketch on my diagram here this is going to cause this thing to want to push it around like that which will cause it to turn around like that so the stress, as I look sideways on, will be as if I'm trying to um, have it in tension. And the tension will be based upon the turning moment M. And then your torsion, what well, you've got to remember with your torsion is that if you're twisting something, that will cause a um, a uh, shearing stress. So we're going to get a certain amount of stress there and a different amount of stress here. So we're going to get a, um, a well, choose the shear symbol. We're going to get a torsion stress like that. So we know the input values for the turning moment and the torsion there. Let's work out what um, the bending stress is. So the bending stress, we're obviously we'll go to the um, engineer's bending equation. So we'll use M over I times by y um, and the y will be 15 millimeters I'll work in SI units so I don't go wrong and then second moment of area for something I'm trying to bend, so I'm trying to bend this rod in effect, will be pi d to the power 4 divided by 64. So what's that? So 1 Eight seven point five times by point zero one five divided by pi times by point zero three to the power of four divided by sixty four. That's 70.736 megapascals. And now the stress caused by the twist in action. So then we need the torsion equations. Actually, I don't want to be using the stress symbol. 
So that's your torque divided by your second polar, second or um, polar, second moment of area times by the radius. That's the same as y. So you need to look up what j is. So that's three, three, seven, five for the talk. That's point zero one five again. And j this time will be pi d to the power 4 divided by 32, very similar to um, second order, second moment of area. Let's put those numbers in. So we've got 337.5 3, times by 0 0.015 divided by pi times by 0 0.03 to the power 4 divided by 32. So that's 63.662 megapascals. Sorry. These values can go in here. So we've now got our stress element. Uh, the twisting, the shear will be, yeah, be positive and it'll be shearing that way. That's fine. So that's that done. Next, find the principal plane and the principal stresses at H. So that's zero. That's sixty three point six six two. That's seventy point seven three six, I think. So we've got that, <coughs> and it wants us to find principal planes and principal stresses. So we're going to be using just stuff from the formula sheet. Not going to need any of the ones on the uh, on the left there. Only going to need them. So the principal plane will be two phi p. Two times sixty three point six six two divided by zero. Good to put in the zero. Keep note that you've done it. Take away seventy point seven three six. That's minus sixty point nine four five. So our first principle play will be theta to 
multiplied that by two, he's given us 30.472 degrees. Could find the other one, just want to find the stresses next. So we're going to use this equation. So we'll find the minimum first. So what's that going to be? Going to have 70.736 divided by 2. There's no um, x term here. Right, that's a positive. So the minimum will be the square root of my bracket. Minus 70.736 divided by 2. I'm going to stick in more brackets because I'm going to square everything. Okay. And plus sixty three point six six two and square that. So that's minus thirty seven point five four <coughs> pardon me. Four five nine megapascals. Still got it on my calculator, I can do the replay button. Change the negative into positive, and we've got the maximum is at 108.19 megapascals. Okay, and I found the element, so everything's done. I should put a minus in there, drop the minus. Yeah, that's it. So there, there would be actually some shearing into the plane. You can work it out. It's going to be very small. It's going to be about one megapascal, so ignoring it is fine. 